Hey everyone, welcome back to Not The Shop. Today is an absolute beautiful day for a maiden flight. Let's go fly the stop SV4. All right, I'm just a couple minutes away from the field. Inside the vehicle, as you can see, I got the Piper Cub. And there's the stop right there. And right above my head are those nice yellow wings. Uh, it's been a three week battle for me to get that plane put together properly. And as of right now, I still may have an issue with the CG. Uh, I spent about two hours last night uh, pulling everything out and putting everything back in again to put the batteries all the way up front. And I think it's still gonna be a little bit tail heavy. So I've got about, oh, I don't know, three or four ounces of lead in the, in the back of the van. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, check out the CG, put the wings on, check out the CG. If everything's good, it's good to go. If not, I'm going to have to pull the cowling back off, which is a real pain in the butt. Um, and then uh, put the lead up front and hope it's all going to work out. So I'll see you guys when it's all done and we're ready to fly. All right. First of all, it's probably the nicest day I've uh, had flying here in years. Uh, the wind is still light and variable. Um, really good day. We had a whole bunch of people out here um, And quite a few of them were new club members haven't met them before so so it was a really good day out here um, with the planes um, the Piper Cub and that's the stomp um, The Piper Cub flies just like a Piper Cub uh, And it's always my first plane to, the, to fly every year that one. I've probably got we got people up here said I've had over a thousand flights on it. I don't know. It's probably seven, eight hundred. So I know what it's going to do. Um, Piper Cubs don't pull punches. Remember that. Um, so that was my first flight since September of last year was with the Piper Cub. Um, now, of course, that was the next flight. I planned on getting the first flight out at about 11 a.m. I didn't have that thing ready to fly until 1230. Um, I came up with more lead because I knew that there was a problem. Um, when I got all the lead put in and even got lead because other guys had some lead strip uh, in their vehicles, um, it still was not enough. So the plane, the biplane itself was tail heavy. So I prepared for it. It's going to sound crazy. Um, I automatically dialed in a little bit of down elevator. Um, just because the Piper Cub right there uh, flies with a little bit of down elevator because I wanted that one to be more aerobatic than typical um, so it's past it's past 35 percent it's it's not quite 40 percent but the CG is past 35 percent um, and so that was what I ended up doing just to balance it out now the plane flies great it, i know it's there so in after flying that thing for eight eight or nine years now um i know exactly what it's going to do how it's going to land how it takes care of winds uh in the front and we, i've even tailwind landed those planes before um so i know it's how it's going to react now biplanes different animals i didn't know how the stop was going to react um but as you will see in the video, because the video started off good. It didn't end the way you want it to end, but as you can see, it's still here. Um, very short video, but the flight was, was still a good flight. Now, the issues that I had this morning was not just with the weight. Once I got to the weight to where it was, I had run the engine for uh, two hours at home. Um, with no cowling on it because I wanted to get the thing broken in and I wanted to make sure that we had the the rings seated um, So when I got out here, I knew with the cowling on it was going to run hotter So the question was how much hotter? So uh, so I had a thermometer uh, to go ahead and check the the cylinder temperature and uh, When we were running it you can tell it was running hot so I shut it down uh, the cylinder head, the cylinder temperature, the cylinder head wasn't too bad. The head of the cylinder um, was actually, it was showing me 180 degrees, which was cool. Uh, you go a little bit deeper up the cylinder wall and it hit 289. And I said, all right, that's just too hot. So uh, we let everything cool down. 
I went in and uh, started adjusting the carburetor. Now your typical wall bro carb, you're always going to start those things out at about one and a half turns on the high and on the low. When I originally started that one up at the house at one and a half high, one and a half low, um, it got hot. It, you could tell it was running hot and so I shut it down and then when you went to spin the prop you can feel the friction. So it did, it didn't, it didn't lock up but you can tell it got hot. So it got really hot. So I ended up uh, pulling the fuel out of the fuel tank and then put a little bit more two-stroke oil in it. And it was the regular ashless, the, the cheap stuff you use and just regular, you know, your weed whacker. Um, it, pretty much everything that I normally fly once it's broken in is I use Bellray HR1 or H1R. Uh, it's what I used to use in the race bike back when I used to race motorcycles. Um, and it's a good oil. So today when I started it up, um, you could tell it got hot. So I shut it down and it took probably about an hour to get the carb set up because I ended up doing what I didn't want to have to do and drill a hole uh, through the side of the, the cowling up front. It's just a little teeny hole. It's just, it's being able to see inside. Um, got it all, uh, got everything dialed in and uh, brought it up to its max RPM and then richened it up so it was, it was between five and 600 RPM less um, because I still don't know what it's gonna do in flight. So uh, went ahead, it took off and you'll like to take off. It jumped off the ground faster than I knew it would. And then um, uh, it was a matter of trying to get the elevator balanced. It could push enough down elevator to get it to level flight. Um, so at that point, once I got level flight, I just wanted to go out there and spend, you know, four or five minutes just flying it just to see what's going to happen. So um, it was when I hit a, uh, uh, when I decided to, to, to roll to the left and drop altitude and just do a low pass bias, um, which is when everything happened. So uh, now would probably be a good time to show you the edited video. I got pictures coming in from friends because uh, I had at least two, two cameras, the one you're watching me on right now if we record this. Um, that was filming and that's what I'm going to be pulling right now all the all the footage off of because we don't know if the other ones came out so I'll see what I could do with this one. Um, but let me go ahead let's show the video now and then as soon as the video is done let's have a chat. to stabilize. Did you trim it out yet? Yeah. Whoa, 
good, aileron's good. That air's getting bouncy. Third bounce of the charm. Woo! Cool. Nice. Yeah, All right, now who didn't think that was one of the best short field emergency landings you've ever seen? That was, uh, at that turn, that turn put a smile on my face. It's a biplane. They don't like gliding, period. Um, and that was the whole thing was just throw that thing into a really high bank turn. Uh, and let that nose start to fall as it was making that turn and it, you know it was a three bouncer i didn't want, even want a single bouncer but i'll take a three bouncer any day when it comes to going through what i had to go through at the end of that flight um now we, we went over uh we checked the plane out um and it did it did that did seize um and that was what killed it so as i heard it lean out um, I was already pulling back on the throttle and I was back to probably about a quarter throttle when it finally shut down um, Because when they go lean like that they go lean real quick. So um, Brought it over uh, If you spin it if you spin the the prop right now, you can feel it uh, the cylinders scored um, So I got to get a hold of NGH or get hold of uh, motion RC who I get NGH from see uh, if we can get a new cylinder. Uh, what I plan on doing uh, in the meantime, because it's, it's, not, it's not as scored as you think it might be. It might be relatively easy. So I will still, when I get home, um, I'm still gonna fire it up. I'll take the cowling off. It won't be today, it'll be sometime probably this week. Um, but I'll go ahead and get it fired up and just run it at idle um, for quite some time just to see if I can get that relatively cleaned up. Um, and if it's still there, um, I'll go ahead, pull the engine, and then as I go ahead and break the engine down, because uh, I know you pull the head off of that, and I think the cylinder, you can pull the cylinder off too. It's not a, it's not a head on top of them, so it, it should come out easy. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's something relatively replaceable instead of just putting a whole new motor in it. But uh, um, I, I just want to see if it's something that possibly if we can get through it right now to see if it's gonna make a substantial amount of power or if I'm gonna notice a drop in power where it, you won't, you're not gonna fly the plane with that motor in it again. But uh, I, I wanna find out and I wanna hear from you guys, anybody out there that's flown that motor, it's the NGH17cc uh, gas engine. Um, if any of you have had that problem or have, have or know of somebody that's had a problem with that motor and what I went through. Um, I mean, I've been doing gas airplanes for, for 20 years, um, and I've never had a carb that, that's been that kind of sketchy working with from, from the beginning on up. And that's coming from a guy who, uh, it's, I worked in the automotive industry, worked as a mechanic, uh, worked in a motorcycle shop. Uh, so pretty much you give me any kind of carburetor, even a Walbro carb, that's one of the simplest ones there. And I do have the proper tools to set them up right. Um, I've never had one where it didn't seem to want to work properly uh, at the factory settings, which was one and a half turns out on the high and on the low. Um, so I did take the carb apart uh, when I was doing the break-in because of the problems I was having to try to get it so that you can work that high end and low end properly. Uh, and, and I just could not get it to do it. So if any of you guys have this engine, let me know if in your adjustments, uh, where was the high end and where was the low end? Uh, because those of us that have worked on them, you know that the low end helps control the high end, but the high end doesn't help with the low end. Uh, I just want to know what you guys have them set up because with the changes I made uh, at the field right now, I would have to uh, take the cowling off and get a count. And I'll probably do a little video when I take it apart just to let you guys know where I'm at and for you guys to just kind of 
hopefully let me know where you guys have your setup and where it works nice just give me a, a base point um, just to start all over again to see if uh, see if we can get her back up in the air so let's go ahead let's call this a video and I'll see you guys next time I'm back down in the shop